Alright guys, welcome back to Elden Ring Ultimate Guide Part 16. Today it's Runes Room Precipice. If this is the first time you've watched any of these guides, then we recommend you watch the video linked in the description. Otherwise, if you've got any tips of your own, stick them in the tips comment. But let's get on with the part. And uh, we're at that, uh, the grace at the base of Runes Room Precipice, right at the tippy north part of Leonia of the Lakes. And we're just ascending these ladders for the now. So thankfully, there's enough ladders to give me time to actually intro the video, so that's nice of them. But uh, otherwise, yeah, so this part is uh, effectively the the precursor part we're going to do to Caled. Now, I think the game assumes that you're actually... Now, pick up that Smith and Stone 4. I think the game assumes that you're going to do Caled first before coming here, but actually this area is scaled quite low. Smith and Stone 4 on the wall. So... Actually, because of all the smith and stones in this area, we're actually going to come here, grab the smith and stones, and then before the boss, we're then going to go do Caelid. So that just gives us a little bit of a boost for Caelid, uh, and I think it's just a slightly better way of tackling, tackling uh, the areas in terms of the order. But these are... Oh, go on. I was going to say I couldn't agree more, but these enemies we're fighting right now, I think, is the first time we've really encountered the vulgar militiamen, and what is it they drop? Uh, well, aside from, uh, so the Smith and Stone 4s, oh, so before we get to that, there's a little drop-off point here, and there was some Smith and Stone 4s in the wall and stuff like that in that previous room. The Smith and Stone 4 is very important, so remember to pick them up. Before I talk about the drops, do this jump here um, for a Smith and Stone 5, which is uh, very cool and very sexy. So uh, then you need to do this careful drop-off back down at the bottom, and then you can pull the lever and bring the, the, the lift back down. And while we're waiting, we can talk about the vulgar militiamen, which are those, uh, the little feisty guys, I guess, that you're fighting. Uh, they can drop their armor set, so that's the helm, the armor, the gauntlets, the greaves. They can drop the saw and the vulgar militia, vulgar militia saw and the vulgar militia shotel. Uh, so just whatever weapon they're, they're wielding at that point. From what I remember, the vulgar militia saw is actually quite a good weapon. Yeah, it's really, really good. It's a halberd with um, innate bleed. It's a really good option if you're going for an occult or a blood infusion on your weapons. Pretty great. So I went for that miner there because he has the little um, lantern thing. They can use that to shoot fire at you, so you might as well hit him before he starts spewing fire. As you can see, tons of uh, smith and stone fours in this area, so it's definitely worthwhile coming here. Uh, otherwise, the so there's a, a kind of a little trap here. So they actually throw smoke bombs. I thought it was gonna, it's like something else, but it's, it's not it's smoke. Uh, and then there's like a poison traps in here, but it's fine because we have flame cleanse me. Oh, we got the saw, big up. But yeah, uh, we oh, get nice. use flame cleanse me to get rid of the uh, to get rid of the poison. Hence why it's so good. But these miners, they can drop the pickaxe, explosive stones, explosive stone clumps. Smith and Stone 4, somber, somber 4 in the wall there. Uh, and then they can, drop a, they can drop a whole bunch of different Smith and Stones. Uh, depends where you are in the game, ultimately. Uh, but they can drop from like 2 all the way up to 8. Uh, that's the short variation of the militiamen right there. Uh, what a bastard, pure stabbing you in the back. Can't, they don't drop this uh, ball and chain weapon though, sadly. But uh, they can. The, the miners can also drop gravel stones and... Uh, Cracked crystals. It depends on the type of miner. So it does, kill that scarab, yes. roll, roll away from it um, because it explodes. Grab this item over on the end. Soft cotton? Yep. Yeah. Nice view um, there as well. Oh, very nice. Um, some of the best vistas in the game. And generally, I think this is one of the better uh, like mineshaft type dungeons. I don't even know if I'd clap. I mean, I suppose it is. But, yeah, I don't even know if I'd class it as that. But that's the only two uh, enemies in the game that actually drop anything. So, basically, we're just going to be uh, picking everything up until the boss. Although, there's a couple of little techniques to make this area a little bit easier that we've uh, discovered. So, I right, make sure to watch it. So, um, vulgar militia saw guy. Uh, we're bringing out the katana with bloody slash because uh, it's really good for killing these bats. So, we're going to just drop off there and grab that somber stone there, which is practically invisible to the naked eye um that one miner gets to live because he isn't in our way so it's a good day for him he can go back and tell his wife send a message he's out here mining his own business that's what he's doing <laughs> he is so 
uh, where our uh, bow is in terms of upgrading, if we use uh, Golden Vow, we can actually one-shot the bats with a mighty shot. So that's that's why we took the Golden Vow there. Because uh, two shot was a pain in the ass. One shot in them, however, is uh, nice and easy. I will talk about something else that's playing a part there, um, potentially. It doesn't oh, yeah. look like it is in this instance, but um, if you attack an enemy that is unaware of you, your first attack will deal increased damage. So that also counts for backstabs. So yet another reason that the stealth does actually come in handy from time to time is that backstabbing an unaware enemy will do more damage than if you were to, say, aggro one and then run behind it and backstab it. Yeah, that is true. So that might actually be playing a little bit of a part, admittedly. Another somber four. Uh, sorry, smithing four. I wasn't a somber. Uh, so there's another bit with bats coming up that's pain that us. So again, we're going to do the uh, the golden vow plus plus mighty shot. But uh, yeah, if we, if we run up on these guys, then we can get an ass slam in. That means we don't need to shoot them with a bow, waste any arrows. Another smith and stone four. This is so good. So this guy right at the end here is one of those stronger bats. Kind of looks like a monk currently, but he actually ends up turning into a bat. So we're going to shoot the other bats that are weaker than it. Um... And then that way we can concentrate on the bigger one last. Yeah, because if you aggro the uh, harpy enemy, the ones that's... I don't know if you can hear it in the video currently, but it is singing. Um, and that's your tell that one of them's nearby. These are the ones that drop a larger golden rune when killed. Um, if you were to aggro that enemy specifically, it would piss off all the bats in the area, making this entire encounter a massive pain in the ass. I actually didn't know that they aggro the other bats. Yeah, they do. Um, I think when you uh, s when they stop singing, the animals and things around them that are listening aren't calmed anymore. Uh, so, yeah, they go back, back to being aggressive animals. Yeah. I hope you you guys saw that there was uh, two more smith and stones in the wall there. But um, yeah, we're just gonna heal up a little bit, and then there's a little bit of a a little jump thing here. Uh, another one of those doesn't feel like you should be able to do it kind of things, but all right, there's a golden rune five. Speaking of not being able to do it, don't try and walk all the way around that pillar. It's not all walkable ground. You will fall to your death. Trust me, I know. All right, well, you heard it here first. Another one on the wall. God, they're really spoiling us here. God, I hate these bad smithing enemies. stone falls. They're really not that bad. Like, the bats aren't as bad as the birds. The birds fucking suck. Oh, the birds are worse than the bats, that is true. <clears throat> so now there's like another little bit, which is like up above where we were. Uh, there's a big land octopus. I suppose I can mention that the the big land octopuses can drop the octopus head piece, I guess. The, the head octopus piece has jiggle help. physics as well, it's really funny. <laughs> yeah. Like, parts of it just wiggle all over the place. It's great. Another smithing stone there. Um, and it has really high blunt damage defense. Um, I guess because it's squishy? Question mark? Yes. Like, yeah. So that's the Serpent God's... some kind of logic. The Serpent God's Curved Sword, which I think is quite good from what I'm aware. It scales decently with strength. Um, and it has a similar heal on hit or kill effect. Can't remember exactly which, but it has a healing effect that when you either damage enemies or kill enemies, you get a bit of health back. So, what you saw there is we were running past those two bats and we're just going to run up here and we're going to grab this grace first of all because um, it's actually, I mean, it's not a hard encounter, right? But it's an annoying encounter to fight both of those bats. So what you can actually do is just do this, and it just makes it easier. There's kind of no reason to not do this. Um, I was so happy when I accidentally discovered that you can just run past them. I mean, I get why, why wouldn't you be able to run past them, but then you just fight them from this direction. It just makes them so much more manageable, because um, one of them, like, fires spells at you from what I can remember, so what it means is that you can just kill one of them first, and then it makes the other one infinitely easier to deal with. So I wait, wait about fighting two of these fucking things at the one time. Fuck that. Not to no. mention... Stone sword key! Running past them. Fuck! Lost Ash the War. <laughs> Not to mention the running past them. Um, 
means that if you did die in this encounter, you don't have to run back through half the fucking level. Exactly, so it's just smart. And I think that is the final Smith and Stone 4 of this bit, I think. Unless there's one at the top, but I honestly couldn't tell you. So I think now, after coming up here, we're probably just going to head back to... Uh, round table. So, you can see that there are two summon signs here, right? Great Horned Hagoth and... Ragoth. Bogger? Yep. Right. But there's meant to be a third. Uh, so, with all the Smith and Stone 4s, upgrade your ship. Fully upgrade one and then fully upgrade the other. That is, that is the plan. <laughs> and this means we can fully upgrade our offhand katana because of Ruins Room Precipice. Let's go. But, there's meant to be three summon signs there. So, the, the way you get the third summon sign is by doing Caled, which tells us that actually you might do this bit after Caled, because if you do it now, then you, you can't get the summon sign. So, we're going to do what the game is telling us to do. And now we're going to go and do Caled. Do not do the boss, go do Caled. But, now in this footage, now we have done Caled, we're going to show you the boss. And now the reason why you don't want to do this, I mean, you, strictly speaking, you could do the boss now if you really wanted to, you just wanted extra souls. You could probably do it, it's not going to be that hard. But the big thing is, see, now we've done Caleb, we've done this NPC's quest, we now have Millicent. Cool, go us. Now you could summon all of them for the boss if you wanted to, or you can summon the imps like we're going to because the imps are based. But strictly speaking, um... What you don't want to do is rest at the grace site past this boss, which is in a new area called Altless Plateau. Because what that does is it ends up progressing um, a part of the game's quest, which is why we want to go do Caleb first, and then we're going to progress it. Because the bit that it progresses is in Caleb. So that is why we're going to do Caleb first, and then come back and finish it off by doing this. But anyway, this is the boss, Magma Worm Makar. Um, we have we've not done one of these before, I don't think. But they are. No, uh... this is the first one of these that you'll fight in the game. No, I said first because these things become pretty fucking common after this point. Yeah, I think there's like seven of them or something in the game, and they're they're pretty easy, honestly. They can be bled, they can be ass slammed, so that's uh, a good combination of traits for us. It can be killed really? by octopuses if you're late in the game. This is true. Uh, really, all you need to do is get behind its hind legs and uh, start hitting and just avoid its attacks. I mean, it's don't really know how uh, how much more simple it is to, to make it. They do they can dish out an inordinate amount of damage, so you really you do need to be kind of aware of its attacks. But if you're up at its hind legs, you should be okay. Uh, particularly later, once we get drag uh, Lion's Claw, it, it makes fighting that thing quite a bit easier. And uh, now we can just rest at the Grace, and then we're heading over to Al Altus. Now again, the footage that you've seen has to be done after you do Caled. And specifically, if you want to fight the boss, I guess you can. But do not rest. You can you can even rest at that grace there, actually. You can fight the boss, you can rest at that grace. But the next grace we're going to, which is up in the next area, past this lift, is the important one. Because that will end up progressing the Rodan Festival, which ends up messing with a bunch of NPC quests and stuff like that. Which is why we're going to do... Kay I'm going to reiterate it. We're going to do Caelid first before we do Altus Plateau. Okay? Which is why we're not going to do Magma Worm Makar. <laughs> Despite the fact that we just showed you how to do Magma Worm Makar. And speaking of Makar, it dropped the Magma Worm Scale Sword. This is a curved greatsword, deals fire damage and physical damage, um, has some faith scaling, so it's not bad for a strength faith hybrid build. It's Ash of War is really good, does very good stance damage, very high damage. Um, just having a quick chat with Melina here, long time no see. Um, yeah, generally, Magma Worm Scale Sword, pretty good. Um, not a bad option if you wanted a, uh, a weapon that upgrades with Somber Spinning Stones. Uh, 
Yeah. But yeah, as you can see, uh, this is what it's like when you've done it. But now, seriously, go and do Caleb first. Please. Please just, just trust us on this one. However, if you want to get to Altus Plateau without doing the Rune Shroom Precipice, if you have both halves of the Dectus Medallion, well, you take them here. And um, you can uh, hoist the medallion, and this will take you to the top. And now we are also at Altus Plateau. And if you came here first, then you can see uh, Raya is here. However, if you went to the other side of Altus Plateau and then kept going up the hill and didn't go up this lift, Raya would be up at that side instead. So I do want to I... quickly say you get one half of the Dectus Medallion in Fort Height, where we did kind of tight quest all the way back in Limgrave. You get the other half in Fort Faroth in Grail's Dragon Marrow, a way later game area, but you can access it straight away. Yes, that is true. So this is it's unlikely that you're gonna be taking the lift up the way, to be fair. Uh plus it's more it's really more beneficial to take the precipice side anyway because of all the upgrade materials. So the lift is actually completely like really just don't even bother doing the lift, to be honest. It's kinda pointless. But other than that, that is it for Rune Street Precipice, and hopefully you followed along with what we're saying. Get to the boss, don't do the boss. Go do Kaled, and then do the boss. We will tell we will tell you when to do the boss. Okay? They get it. I don't know. Some people just might not, right? But that's it for this part. Catch you later. And okay, there we go. That's Rune Strain Precipice done. Join us in part seventeen, where we're going to be doing Kaled. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.